Bautista, a high school senior in Denver, Colorado. I auditioned for She Heroes through Girls Inc. And this is my third interview. I'm excited to be here introducing you to Professor Patty Limerick. Patty teaches at the University of Colorado and is a leading historian on the American West. She writes books and serves as an advisor for documentaries and movies. She is also a guest columnist in the New York Times and a Pulitzer Prize juror. Patty has won many awards for her work, including the MacArthur Genius Grant. What did you dream about becoming when you were a kid? Pretty early I started thinking about being a writer and wanting to, wanting to write, but really not thinking I could do it. Was there something in your childhood that caused you to want to become a historian? My mother and father were um, very busy. They both worked full time. They really liked hearing funny stories, and if you wanted their attention, one way to do it was to have an experience during the day or to hear a story from somebody else and get that worked up so that at dinner you could say, well, I heard a funny thing today. And so I think I spent a lot of time trying to get stories. That's what I, with history, was really a, oh boy, here is just like an endless gold mine of stories. What was the hardest thing you had to deal with when you were a kid? I had this one sister, my sister Sunny who would teach me to read. It was great, but then when I got to, uh, to kindergarten, I was way ahead of everybody else. So then that turned out to be a problem. They decided to have me skip third grade. And I, I just, I wanted to be invisible. I wanted people to not no, notice what had happened there, but I couldn't, I had to keep living with it. What grade school classes or life experiences were the most important for your career? In fourth grade, we went from a school where we had all been since kindergarten, and then they clumped us all together at a central school in, in our town. So fifth grade, there's kind of a, oh my. And again, remember, I just changed I just changed from third to fourth grade, so I never really got a chance to be comfortable anywhere. And so suddenly I'm in this class, and two uh, girls came up to me at the end of the first day of fifth grade, and so they said to me, would you like to go to the park and fight after school? And I said, no, <laughs> no, I wouldn't like to do that. And it was a very nice, person, Petronella Benson, who was African-American and who was really a peacemaker. So I remember Petronella really worked hard to make sure that we all could meet each other. That's 50 years ago. When you do something in fifth grade or fourth grade and it is kind and it really takes people who are having problems and helps them to uh, live in better ways, that really lasts. So you say you were a shy person. How did that all change because now you're doing interviews, mm -hmm. you're giving teaching classes. In a situation um, where you are feeling shy, it is almost certain that the great majority of the people there are feeling the same way. So I go to college, 17, I walk into the dining hall, there is nobody I know in sight. Well, this is, there's two choices and they're both terrible. There are groups of people sitting together and they look like they have known each other for ages. I can't sit with them. Then I thought, well, that leaves one other choice, which is to go off and sit by myself. And I thought, oh, no, I can't do that. So then, fortunately, as I'm looking off at the edges, I notice that there's like six, five or six people who have come in and sat by themselves in the far edges, I think. Well, there's the solution. I gathered them all up, and I made them sit with each other. And then, of course, they're quite shy. So, I mean, I can't sit down and say, oh, I'm too shy to do anything, and leave these people just in a terribly uncomfortable situation. I have to try to help them. And then, what do you know, as a teacher, that's what you do. As a teacher, you can't, you can't walk into the classroom and go, oh, no, oh, I'm too embarrassed to be here. Oh, <laughs> just please talk among yourselves and pretend I'm not here. You have to come in and say, here, uh, you've all read this thing. What did you think about this? So you have to be in there running the conversation and keeping things moving. So I think it's actually very possible to be very shy and out of that to know how much um, good you can do and how welcomed you would be if you helped other people out of their troubles. My success has come from the fact that I, I will um, do things that a more sensible person wouldn't do. I'll, and I will feel uh, happy if it succeeds. That would be very nice. But I will also feel happy if I just have an interesting experience and I get a story out of it. I had a friend, Juanita Lara, who was a year or two older than I, and she and I, in 1966, when we were very young, we were just teenagers, we started a race relations seminar in, my, in our hometown, and that was pretty unusual. So Juanita um, 
was just excellent for making me see, well, here we are. I mean, yes, of course, we do have some people who are kind of mad at us, but our choice would be to be silent and to let a town that really had some big troubles and race relations to just let that stay quiet. So anyway, so I think the success has come from the fact that I'm, I'm wired. Um, sitting still is not my, my talent. What advice would you give kids? Or if there are areas of your life that scare you, try to go there. Try to go into that area and see whether you should be scared or not. If you're frightened of uh, being up in front of people, then then get up in front of people and see how that, that feels. I guess I take pride in having stayed courageous even when I was scared. So I guess I, as a younger person, I thought that courage went all the way down to the core. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to know that courage can be just, just riddled with, with fear and still be courage. <laughs>